also, it could just be perhaps a manager who wants to know that this appointment's going on. Whoever's listed as that additional participant, this appointment will show on their calendar. Just below it, we can make some changes here. So if we do make a change to it, it's going to either show the last time that it was created, who created it, on what date and what time, or the last time a change was made to it. We can also attach labels to these appointments, and we have two different types here. So we have single event labels. That's attaching one label to one single event that's occurring. Right below it, we got the recurring event label. So if we attach a label here, if this happens to be a recurring event, that label is going to apply itself to all events that are occurring. Just below it on the bottom left, we have this full details. And this is often kind of overlooked, but it looks like one big blue button. It's actually two. So if you hit full details, that's going to bring you to that create appointment details page. If you hit this button here, the little upward to the right facing arrow, that's going to open up that same page. However, it will open in a new window just so you don't lose your footing. And feel free to ask questions also. Um, I do see them here, so let me see if I can kind of go back. And I'll come back to some of the questions towards the end, and if I don't get around to any of them or all of them, uh, what we'll do is we can kind of take them and we'll send out emails with answers to those questions. This go-to thing is a little small, and I only read about one line per question. So I really can't read that just yet. Jen Clark, I see that you asked it. Let me see if we can see it. But for participant, it appears to pull through the pay rate for the provider on the appointment as the pay rate for any and all the participants. Well, the pay rate would just depend on who the provider is. So yeah, it would pull the provider pay rate for the original one, but it would also pull the one for the additional participant if those rates are different. Looks like we have, what is the benefit of event labels? Can you give me an example? Yeah, so event labels, a couple different things. So you can make your own scheduling labels here. They could be made over on this left panel that we kind of see. But I like to kind of explain it as a couple different things. Maybe we're doing a lot of office visits. So maybe we want to make labels for every single room in our office, room one, room two, room three. So what we could do is, yeah, Andy has an appointment with Bobby. He's going to be in room one. So if you're searching in the calendar and you want to make an appointment for somebody else and you wanted to ensure that whatever room you want to go into isn't made, if we're taking that route, at that route in regards to labels, up here in the search bar, Notice you can search by labels. So you could type that out, room one. Hit enter, every single appointment with that label is now gonna populate. So you would say, okay, well, so-and-so has an appointment with so-and-so in room one at this time, so if I'm gonna make an appointment, I'm gonna go to a different room. Or we could also make labels for the services we provide. I mean, yeah, we might be telling that in the title of the appointment, but it's just another way to kind of filter things out. So possibilities are endless. Those are my two examples. If you have more, feel free to share. All right, so a couple other things we have here. So when we're in week view, we have these navigational buttons over here. So if I hit the left arrow, it's jumping us back a week. If I hit the right arrow, it's jumping us forward a week. No matter where we are, we can always hit today, and it's going to bring us back to our current week. Off here to the right, we have some export options. So first thing we can do is we can export this calendar if we wanted to in the form of a CSV or a text file. We can also have some printing options here. So if I hit print to PDF, we get this little pop-up. So we can select our view type, day, week, month, planner view. Do you want to include the weekends? What's your start date? What's your count? How far out do you want me to print it? We can also change that paper orientation. And by default, if you print, it's going to show the provider and the client as their name. You can choose not to. You could say no. Or you could put ID only, and it's just going to show that randomly generated ID number that's given to a contact once they're added to the system. All right, so a couple other things we can do here is filter. So this is just going to allow you to audit, make sure everything's kind of looking good. So we're going to see these filters on another page, but I am going to introduce them here. So first one we got here, converted, not, partial, or fully. So you could hit not. And it's going to show you all your appointments that have not yet been converted. So this isn't the best example for it right now because we are in the current week. But when I hit this filter, this is what I like to do. I like to jump backwards. Go back in time. Go back a couple weeks. Go back a month or two. If you see something there, that's an obvious indicator that that appointment was not converted to a timesheet. So you'd want to go get with the provider and say, hey, I saw you had an appointment on April 1st. Did you do it? Yeah, I did it. The appointment's done. Well. If you want to get paid for it, make sure you go and convert it, 
and we might have timely filing deadlines. So we want to get that converted as soon as we can so we can get paid for it. All right, so partial. I'm sure some of you guys have noticed. Let's see if we got one here. So if we go to create timesheet, we have two different service codes that we're using for this particular appointment. So off to the right, we do have the option here to convert one appointment. This is typically done in error. These two codes, for instance, are always used together. So we always, always want to be sure to convert all the timesheets. Most of the time, if it's a partial conversion, it may have been done in error. So it's really good to kind of run that filter and go through and check it. And then fully, that's just the opposite of being not converted, it's just gonna show you your fully converted events. One quick thing before I talk about these canceled and deleted, so if I click this and I get this little pop-up, look towards the bottom right, we have two buttons here, delete event, cancel event. Essentially they do the same thing, but they have two different functions. So delete event would mean, oh shoot, I messed up so bad, I'm just gonna delete it, I'm gonna start over. If you cancel it, you have a couple different reasons. It asks you why are you canceling it? Is it a client cancellation? Is it a provider cancellation? Or is it something else? We can actually make custom cancellation reasons here. You do not have to use just these three cancellation codes. And notice just below it, this is actually a recurring event. So it's saying, hey, I notice you wanna cancel it. Do you wanna just cancel this one? Or do you wanna cancel all remaining? Most of the time it's a one-off situation. Maybe the client called and said, yes, our kid is sick this morning, we cannot make it. Let's just cancel this one, but we're still on for next week. And essentially what these buttons are gonna do is going to allow you to see those. So if you cancel it, if you delete it, it's going to disappear, but you can always get it back. And then active, that's just gonna hide your active, um, active uh, appointments. Authorize just below it without and with. So that's just essentially saying, show me all my appointments without an authorization and show me all my appointments with an authorization. Just below that is attendance. So if we're doing attendance tracking, so you can say, show me everything with no record, show me all children who are present, or another reason, if you picked one, and we can also filter out by absentee excuses. Do you have an excuse or do you not have an excuse? So this is the traditional calendar. This is kind of where it starts. This is where we start within practice management implementation. All right, guys, I think that's all I got for you. So if you do have any other questions, feel free to follow up. Uh, and uh, you guys have a great rest of your day. I'll talk to you guys a little bit later. Thanks for coming.